he used to be a lecturer yeah. in three different universities mm -hmm. and he decided to quit and become a gold farmer. See, I, I have questions that I ask anyone that I meet. No, don't, don't, don't hear me. Are you sure you're okay? I'm so glad I decided to go on this journey because every single African that I meet along the way inspires me more. And listen, if an African inspires me, that's why I need to use this platform to inspire you. We are changing the narrative, not just showing you the beauty of Africa, but letting you know that it's possible to make it in Africa. She has done it. And I know and believe that you can also do it too. I believe that her story might inspire so many university lecturers. Hey, and I'm thinking if we get our university lectures out of university, who's going to teach us then? I'm Grace Woji, a full-time farmer of goats, uh, matoke and sheep, based here in Rakai, central Uganda. Basically what we do, we are majorly into breeding goats and uh, breeding sheep. We also do the importation. We also offer trainings to farmers out there. Believe me or not, this is the most beautiful thing I've seen since I came to Uganda. Thank you. <laughs> How does that make you feel? I feel happy as well. Seeing all these goats, sheep, cows around you, waking up to them every morning. It's a beautiful moment. It's a beautiful scenery. I love it. That is more reason as to why I left Kampala to come here and do it full time because I love it. You're living six hours away from Kampala. You don't like the city life. City life bores me actually. I, I always tell people that every time I'm in the city, I fall sick and sometimes I uh, am broke when I'm in the city because it's so expensive to live in the city. You used to be a lecturer yeah. in three different universities mm -hmm. and you decided to quit mm -hmm. and become a good farmer. See, I, I have questions that I ask anyone <laughs> that I meet. No, don't, don't, don't hear me. Are you sure you're okay? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You mean... You chose goat farming oh, over wow. lecturing in a university. I, I was very sober when I made this decision and I don't regret it. And I would advise anyone out there who wants to live office life, I would always, they're always welcome to come and I advise them. Basically, I'm one kind of person who loves experimenting, exploring, uh, creati creativity, I'm hands on. I hate doing the same thing over and over, over again. again. You get it? Here, when you're on a farm, you always experience challenges. You're always creating new solutions. The money was good, but it was not as good as the money I get from goat farming because it's, uh, I get from several incomes, streams of several incomes. Are you saying being a goat farmer worth more than being a lecturer in three universities? It is. Obviously, in the first two years, it was not easy because I was just starting. But after I uh, established myself, I did the groundwork. I did the branding, the marketing, because I do most of my marketing on uh, social media. Things started falling into play and I never regretted. The money I'm earning here is uh, three times more than what I was earning as a university lecturer. And on top of that, on top of the pressure of, you know, you have not taught here, you must teach here, you must mark exam examination scripts, you must do this and this. So I quit one university, from one university to the other, and then I came for this. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for eight years now. Eight years? Yeah, eight years. I've been doing it for eight years. And it's quite a journey, a very interesting journey, full of ups and downs, but I don't regret. <laughs> and I'm never quitting. How many acres do you have right now? We farm on around 200 acres of land. But this is family land. This is not my land, personally. We farm on family land. What do you land. mean by family this land? This is my daddy's land, my father's land. Okay. I requested him, can I use part of your land because he had cows on. And uh, his first instinct was, he gave me all sorts of risks. The goats will be stolen, you will not manage staying in the, in the bushes, they will disturb you, you may end up being raped, all sorts of things for a girl child. I told him, you know what dad, let me try it out. If I fail, I'll come back to you. So every year that passed, I kept improving, every year. So every time he comes here, he would say, oh my God. How did it start? Your father gave you the land, mm -hmm. and then from there? Okay, how I started, you can imagine even after teaching in three universities, hmm. I didn't have the capital to start. 
the money never used to come on time. No, the money never used to come on time. They would only pay us when we are about to strike. Like most university lecturers, we, would, we are about to strike, then they give us some, a, a little bit of the money, and then you pay your rent, you pay for food, fees, and what. I'm like, no, I can't continue doing something like that. Wow. So I said I quit. So when I started, I got a friend who is a farmer, who is already an established farmer. He loaned me five million. Five million, that is roughly like uh, $1,200. Okay. He loaned me that money. I started with 30 goats. And then I also got a few males. I started with, you see the makeshift house? Mm. That I didn't have enough money that even the timber, some of the timber, I would nail it myself to cut on the cost of uh, building the, that house. And I started with that. And uh, what made me so famous that everybody wanted to know, mm. I'm a lady. Mm. Everybody wanted to know how I make it. Because most people come in, even the men come in, and they fail on this. And like, how does, he, how does she do it? Why does, it, why does she make it feel easy. Appear so easy, yet it's not so easy? <laughs> yeah. So that is the kind of thing I wanted to bring out. So what I did, what I started doing, when everybody thought yeah. that farming is hard, I would go out and do the research. Do the research, because I was a former lecturer, I, I make simple templates. To my shock up to now, those simple templates I used to make short notes and I give them on people on WhatsApp, on Facebook. People still use them up to now. But I was also green about goats. I was totally green. But I would do my research, give out the rest, and eventually I became an expert on goat farming. That is how I am. Does it mean that you had a passion for goat farming? I had a passion for farming in, because we grew up as farmers. My oh. dad, my dad, uh, my dad used to get all the money. He used to pay our school fees in advance, a year in advance. He would come here, sell a few cows, give each one their pay slip. They go to the bank and they bank the money a full year in advance. And that's I'm like, you know, if he can do it with his little salary, because he's a surveyor, he's a retired surveyor, he was earning very little. If he can pay for all of us, the eight of us in advance, then farming, there's really something. But we are living in a continent where we don't see farming for elites. We see farming for poor people. Exactly. I mean, you used to be a lecturer, now you are a full-time good farmer. I mean, if you, you should say something to change the mindset of young Africans out there, or Africans in general, what would that be? Okay. The, we, should, we as Africans, we should change the narrative about farming. It is us, not anybody else to change. Like I've come out and I'm uh, passionate about goat farming and I'm great at goat farming. Mm. Somebody else there, like Daniel is good at chicken, poultry, yeah. poultry yeah. farming, you get yeah. it? Yeah. Anybody out there, what I should tell all Africans out there watching me, mm. Farming, you can get, never go wrong in farming. Obviously, the first two years may not be easy because you're still grumbling, you are struggling with little resources. Mm. But with time, every time you repeat something, consistency, you always earn out of that thing. So farming is our gold mine in Africa, but most Africans don't know that. They run to the city, they, are, they rush to go to the Asian countries to go and look for work. Our gold is here. Actually, I feel bad when I see people selling land to go in the cities. But like I said, not everybody is passionate. You know, this, this kind of business requires yeah. somebody who is passionate. That when there are losses, you still continue going. When, there is a, when you have got something, you still, every time it is always, they always need something to keep you going. What else you don't have in here? Because I've seen Matoke, it's like you... Basically, our idea here, we want to make this an, uh, an agro-tourism mm. kind of mm. farm and uh, where farmers come to get all the information they need about something, about livestock. We are into barani cows, we are into local goats, we are into boa goats like you're seeing. We are also trying to start sheep farming and why we started the sheep, they are low maintenance. We have the grass and they don't require a lot of capital. Basically as soon as you buy, you buy them. The only maintenance we incur there, it is for deworming them and also for the person who has them, there is nothing mm. else. So it is a small cost and they give us good money. And the reason as to why most farmers are going for sheep farming, reason being farmers are failing to grow the numbers in what? In goats because of the high mortality. So there in Uganda, like you have seen, you don't see anywhere where there is a, a butcher. 
for for mutton. Mm. But the mutton still goes. Mm. People sell it. It still goes. There is no butcher that you go to a specific place and say, I want mutton. mutton. It's yeah. not there. But the market the, for the market for the sheep is quite growing. It is growing all the day, all day long. If farming was used to punish us, mm. even in schools, yes. does it mean that there's something wrong with our education system? There is something. You used to be a lecturer yourself. Yeah. There is something wrong with our education system. Reason being that it is affecting us in one way or the other. One, when we are in school, what they do in our schools, they pump our children with a lot of theory. A lot of theory. How do you teach somebody something European history? It's not helping us here as Africans. Let's start by learning what makes us special as Africans. Let us start by learning what makes us tick as Africans. You get it? Most of these things I'm doing here, they are not out of the that I've not copied them from the Bazungus out there, the whites out there. No, this is African setting. Simple, simple, mm. simple. Any African out there can what can make it. But when we grew up, when we were young, the baddest and the thing that used to make most Africans hate farming, they would beat us. They would beat us. Beat. I mean, they would punish us. When they are punishing you, they punish you and they give you a slash to gun slash. They punish you. They give you a chunk of land to dig. So most people grew up hating farming, hating agriculture. Agriculture is not meant to be dirty. You can see my hands are clean, you get mm -hmm. it? One can get money out of there. Farming, you can work at your own pace. Farming, you, you open up your mind, the creativity, the innovativeness. You always read something. If it is in the US out there, you have seen it. Why can't I apply it here? Why can't I use it? And Africans, we are very innovative. But because of the kind of education that we are pumped with when we are growing up, that even the people we are employing now are having challenges. That you bring him, the person has a master's, they have two master degrees, you bring him to work for you, he is asking for a lot of pay, but what is giving is nothing. Because they know nothing, they know nothing with the practical. As Africans and the parents out there who are watching me, they should, I should encourage them to bring their children to technical schools, to schools where they can have hands-on information. Let's first do away with a lot of theory. Theory is not helping us. Actually here, I employ graduates, hmm. but when I'm employing graduates, I don't even look at their paperwork. I look at what they are going to give me, manual, what, how they are going to use their mind to give me the kind of work I need. I need somebody who can think and say, I can think out of my mind to do this. Madam, the goats are getting cold at night. What have you done, you as an African? Get a charcoal stove, put charcoal, put it there and get, get, get warm. Instead of lamenting, that is the kind of innovative creativity. Simple, simple things creating solutions for our challenges that are facing us. We don't need the whites to come and help us here. No, we don't. So what you're saying is that we need to create African solution for Africa's problem. Exactly, that's what I mean. How is the demand? The demand is overwhelming me. I've told you my numbers are around 700. Yeah. I have, I do, I, I have the land, I have the expertise, but I don't have the kind of capital to allow me to push my goods to, to 3,000 because that is my target. I don't have the capital. The demand is overwhelming me. Why they are clocking 700 only, not even 1,000? The demand for the goods is overwhelming me from all over East Africa. That actually, currently, I'm no longer picking calls from Kenya because I don't have goods to give to them. The demand is overwhelming me. Does it mean you need partners? I need partners. Individual partners? I need individual partners to come and uh, we do this together. We increase the goat population. I can assure them that the market is there. Those who have seen me, at least they have seen me sell goats on a weekly basis. On a weekly basis, I sell between 80 to 100 goats. And usually, I don't sell from my numbers. I move around my neighbors. I get the goats, I bring them here because I'm overwhelmed. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm creating outgrowers mm. in my neighborhood mm. to get the kind of goats that I sell to the customers out there. Well, what has been the major challenge? Uh, here, as a, as, a, as a farmer, the major challenge, every farm experiences uh, unique challenges, mm. but here my uniquest challenge is uh, I get a high staff turnover because I use youth, they're illiterate, 
you cannot bind them using an agreement. You bring in somebody today with the right conditions, you give him the good money, you give him all the incentives, medical, you have somebody to cook for them good food, you interact with them, they have a TV, they watch soccer anytime, you give them all the kind of information. But somebody out there will call him and tell him, you know what, we are having an increment of uh, roughly five dollars. He will run away. And after three months, he realizes that he was duped. He wants to come back. And my resolve on that, I never bring back somebody who has left. So one, high staff turnover, the youth do not want to work. They want easy money, easy money, easy come. They want, I face that. Actually, time is going to come. We are devising means. Because when I went to visit in South Africa, my mentor he has over 7,000 goats. Wow. And they are only managed by three workers. How does he do it? He's paddocking. He paddocked and all the goats are in different paddocks. So time for counting or for, for uh, deworming all that, the three workers do all the work. You get it? And that's where we are going because managing human resource is becoming the hardest, especially with our youth. Hmm. They don't want to work. They want to slay in Kampala. They want <laughs> to take nice pictures. When you bring it up, they, they are only good at negotiating good salaries. They don't want to work at all. Then the other challenge, like I told you, you can see our farm is a little bit in the valley. So we experience, especially in the rainy season, we get a lot of water coming. Madden. Yes, the, the upper part, because the goats and the cows have to cross over to go to the other part, which has a lot of vegetation. So usually we have foot rot. Mm. and it increases our expenditure on medication every rainy season. That is one. Those are the two biggest challenges we face as farmers. But the issue of market, I have a very high demand for goats. My goats are highly sought after. That I sometimes I switch off. Actually, right like now I've switched off my phone. It would be buzzing. How many people have you employed so far? I employ, I employ 22 people here. And uh, majorly, uh, full time, full time they are 15. And then the casuals are the other, the rest. You separate them for their moms? Yeah, we separate them because we don't allow them to go to graze. When they, they rush to graze, when they are still young, they are, their stomachs are still delicate. They get worms. Oh. Hey. They get worms. <laughs> ha, you're coming to me. <laughs> Woo! So I'm going to come to you. Wow. Yeah. They know you're coming to me. How are you? I thought it's only humans that like me. I didn't know that even <laughs> animals also like me. I wanted them to dig yeah. in the pellets. Eh? This is our time for them to give birth. Eh? Mm. Oh, can hold this. See, exotic. Eh? They are heavier. Their meat is yeah. compacted. Eh? That is where the magic is. The, if you can hold the, the other one you have been holding, it's yeah. a local goat. They are light. Yeah, this one is heavy. Eh? How old is this one? This is uh, like uh, two weeks old. Ooh. Mm. Here, all of these are not yet three months. Actually, they are like one and a half, two months, a few days. Like this is, I didn't leave it there. It was born, I think, like uh, early last week. Mm. So this is the house we started with. Wow. This is where I was this doing the, the... This is where you started? Yeah. Oh my God. This was my house, the first one. I started with the 30 goats, I started here. Listen, mm. now I believe that you really borrowed money to do this. <laughs> <laughs> now, after seeing this, I believe that you really borrowed money. Hey, you know, when, when you borrow money, uh, you see the nail and you're like, exactly. hey, this is uh, $100. So you use only one instead of two. I was two. trying to cut costs. So I didn't want to eat to be no, so expensive. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. You see, you see the, the creativity I'm talking about? Hmm. These are things our youth cannot think about. This is something so small, you just get a brush. The goats need to scratch themselves, you see? The hairs around, eh? They scratch themselves. It is this simple. Hmm. It's giving us a show. Uh, it's telling us that what she said was true. Look at that. <laughs> oh, okay. So when I got the money, that is, we put up that, majorly for the exotic goats. They like clean environment, and it is easy to clean. This looks beautiful. Thank you. It means like uh, this one, when you had good money, that's when you built this uh -huh. one. This is, but Africans out there, don't fear to start. Start with the little money you have. Use locally available materials. Mm. That is what I use, that is eucalyptus. 
the timber I got, some timber I got from the farm. It is only the nails, the net and the castle I've put and also the roofing. But the rest, it was just simple, simple things to start. Don't start to extravagantly. You find somebody that started with a house, very expensive house, time for stocking goats, they stock very few goats. Oh. And they have used all the money to construct the house. It does not make economic sense for a farmer out there. Yeah. We do our water collection. Water is used to be a challenge. And we realize our goats need fresh, clean water all the time. Yeah. So we do the water collection and then we bring the troughs. But right now, all our dams, we have dams, we have several dams in the, every corner of the farm. Okay. They are drinking in the, in the different corners. But June, July, when uh, the water is reduced, we start using some of this, this water here. Yeah. Do you have electricity here? Yeah? We use solar, majorly. Solar. solar. Hey. This place is always lit up. It is solar. Mm. Do you sometimes do cross-breeding? Do I what? Cross-breed. Cross-breed, yes, we do cross-breeding. These are all cross-breeds. They come from the local goats. These are all crosses. Okay. Yeah. And majorly also these from this side are local goats, uh, uh, cross-breeds from the exotic. So what is born here, if they look nice, we like them, we transfer, we transfer them this side. Uh, the house is in the background. Yeah. When I was starting in 2015, that mud house is where I used to stay with my workers because I was cutting costs and I had nowhere to stay. So I would stay in one room for a number of days. When I would go back to Kampala, my workers would change their bed sheets and then they used the room. So it, got, it went on like that till when I got money to construct the big house you have seen up there. Oh, okay. so, but I was staying here. So somebody out there, you don't have to start fancy. What matters is start. Start and be consistent. The challenges will come, but please don't give up. That's all I can say to the farmers out there watching me. How many of you will sacrifice to stay here just to make sure your dream comes true? This is the struggles that most successful people don't show you. But they go through a lot just to make it big. So I would say that always make their life inspire you not to hate unsuccessful people. Is this a banana? Yeah, this is Madana Matoke. Everyone, Madana Matoke. It, it's not the same thing like no, this. No, that is different. That is sweet. This is bejali cooked, that one is not cooked. It's consumed, it's consumed as a sweet banana, this is not sweet. When, but when they ripen also, there are some people who like to eat them when they are ripe. They can also be sweet as those. But majorly we cook it, every home we cook it katogo in the morning breakfast. You can have it for lunch, you can have it for dinner. It's just like that. Okay. Do you eat this? Yes, we do eat this yam. It is very delicious and what we do, with the leaves? The leaves, we give, we feed the leaves to our local chicken there, the turkey, we feed it to them. <laughs> what do you do with the leaves? I'm heartbroken. <laughs> I'm heartbroken. We don't eat the leaves here. No! <laughs> I'm heartbroken. <laughs> you don't eat this? No, we don't. We give them to the chicken. They it's enjoy so, it so, so much. To every Ugandan watching me right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is called kontomre, the kokoyam leaves. Yeah. This can give you one of the best sauces in the whole world. And this gives blood. Wow. If you don't have blood, mm -hmm. you can actually chop. chop this, boil boil it, put it. I don't know if you guys make stews, you put it. Oh my God. Yeah, in the G-nuts. And, and even if you need blood only, boil it and just drink the water. Wow, that's something new to me. This is in, in Ghana. We give it to There's the a lot of money. Only. People sell this. Chicken. Chicken. We only eat the roots down. And what about cassava, the leaves? The leaves, we actually hear the leaves are poisonous to the goats. So we just leave them in the garden. We don't even want the goats to go there in the garden. So <laughs> in West Africa, okay, let me talk about Ghana. In some part of Ghana, goats only eat the. Uh, the cassava leaves. She's shocked. Goats. Then they get sheep. a portion? No, all of them. That's, the, that's actually what they, they like. Wow. Then we use the roots mm. to pound our fufu. Okay. But if you go to Liberia, Nigeria, um, what's it called? Sierra Leone, they only make the best stew 
out of the cassava leaves. That's news to my ear. <laughs> the the goats in Ghana eat cassava leaves. Cassava leaves? It has cyanide. We don't feed it to our goats. It is poisonous. It causes miscarriages. And also goats that feed on uh, the cassava leaves, they don't usually fatten. And what about this? The banana leaves, uh -huh. we, give, we use it to mulch. And then if you are not using it to mulch, we can give some of it to the goats. Okay, mm. finally, That's, we have thing, something in common. Mm. Yes, finally, we have something in but common. But the leaves, what you should know about the leaves, there is no nutrient content if you give it to the goats. Basically, you are feeding them to water. You are feeding them water. There is nothing called in a, a nutrient in them. Jeez. That's why your goats are small. That's why we have small goats. Yeah, exactly. Eh? That cyanide cannot allow a goat to grow fat. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it is poisonous. So we don't it, feed it. We to the feed goats. them with our plantain that leaves. That is water. <coughs> Jeez. This is there is no nutrient though. content. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, ho I hope West Africans are watching this video. <laughs> uh, your final message to Africans watching us right now. Okay. My final remark on Africans out there don't be afraid to farm. Farming is fun. Farming, you have a lot of, uh, you have a big environment to explore your creativity. It is uh, your, your own boss. You work any day. I've just been talking to Odemaya. I told him I've been away from the farm for 10 days, but I have some money. I'm already earning even when I'm not around. So don't be afraid to farm. Please, let's start to farm now. And there is no single day in Africa where any African is going to go without food. We shouldn't be importing food. We have all the food here. Let us start that crusade of growing our own food. Let us teach our children to grow the food, to become farmers. Farm farming is not only dirty, but farming, there are so many avenues one can earn income from farming. Farming is a business. If you want to know more or you want to see more from Grace, all you need to do is to click in the link below. His YouTube channel link is there. I mean, you all have to go and subscribe. And you also use Boji Facebook. Farms. Yeah, Boji Farms, we are on Facebook. YouTube, this Boji, Boji Farms, Uganda. Please subscribe to our channel. We are going to be talking so much about our experience, raw data about farming experience in general here in Uganda. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm so inspired. And I know and believe that you are also inspired. Like this video, subscribe, and to be subscribe. part of our channel. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Bye.